Today's topic, how to stop being a Henry and take control of your finances. Henry, which is not a person's name, stands for high earner, not rich yet. That is how we get the acronym Henry. And if you stumbled upon this video, you probably have an idea what it is because you probably are not searching in your YouTube bar, what is Henry if you don't know what it is. So you have found the Henry database. So in today's video, we are going to walk through the basics. What is a Henry? What definitions do we give? But then also how do we stop being a Henry? But the first part of Henry is good. Let's not forget that high income, high earner. We like that part. We wanna fix the last part, not rich yet. So in today's video, we're gonna walk through some ideas on what you can do to fix that part of the equation. Simple things as in increasing your income, increasing your savings, maybe a side gig. But don't forget, this is a function of net worth in this conversation. So sometimes it's as simple as just continuing to pay down your debt. When you pay down your debt, net worth goes up. So we're gonna walk through a few of those items page by page here, so stay tuned. That's all coming up next. First up, are you a Henry? You know, before we even get into it, I'm always amazed by how popular this topic actually is. In terms of our YouTube videos, this is one of our more popular YouTube videos. We're not the world's largest channel, but this does have a lot of views, also has a lot of likes. In terms of the actual blog posts that we wrote that kind of give us guidance for our first video and now this newer video, also one of our top 10 blog posts still to this day, and we wrote that one a while ago. So that goes to show you there is a lot of interest in this topic. And I think it probably speaks more to the millennial generation where we see individuals having this higher income. For our specialty, we work with physicians and we see this higher income, but maybe the net worth, the assets aren't there yet. Let's first get into the definition of what is a Henry. Now, there's not one term that says, hey, this is what it is. And you could go to a few different news sources and they're all gonna give you different answers here. So let me give you some general guidance here. The first thing is always income, right? What's Henry stand for? A high earner. So first part, you gotta be a high earner. I also say this also depends where you live. New York City versus rural Iowa, high earner is probably gonna have a lot different context to it. But generally, this is what you see when you kind of do the old Google search on it. Income, 250,000 to 500,000. So I always label this as household income. So whether that's a dual household or a single household, that's what we're looking at. But there are some sources that drop it the whole way down to 100,000. And that is a big difference. If you're making 100,000 compared to 500,000, you probably live a little bit different life. But let's just use those contexts to at least describe high earner. Now I gotta look at my screen here for this one. Uh, they also usually give the link to millennials. That's usually where the term Henry is getting linked. This is the birth years we're gonna list. This is where I gotta peek over here because even that term can change. What is a millennial based on birth year can change based on what website you're searching. They're giving us 1981 to 1996. Some people like a little bit more larger band and they'll say anyone under the age of 55. That is a pretty big brush stroke to say millennials at 54 years old. So let's just use those birth years, but regardless, it doesn't really matter what your age is or birth year. If you have really good income, but your assets don't really back up that story, you're probably somewhere in this Henry group. So let's use that as our definition. If you scroll down to our notes, we have a little bit more context in the blog post as well, but let's at least use that to get us started on, are you a Henry or not? So that's what we get to start with. All right, let's start working through how do we fix the second part of the equation, the not rich yet part. So when we look at this, we're gonna really think of it in terms of net worth. So the first one that we start with in our blog post, we technically start with creating a list. Um, I would say like financial journaling, but that's not really actionable for a video. So let's just get into the liabilities. So the first thing I want you to do in this equation is just make a list of your liabilities. What debts do you have? Is there a mortgage? Are there student loans? Are there a car payment? Is there credit card debt? Is there any personal loans? Make a list. When you make that list, jot down the interest rate beside it. Your goal here is to build a plan of attack. Certain things like your mortgage, if you hit that mortgage lottery and you're one of the lucky ones that have a mortgage 3% or lower, it might not be a top priority right now, right? You're in a pretty good spot. If you have student loans, but you're going for public service loan forgiveness, you don't get a gold star from the government if you pay extra on your loans when going for public service loan forgiveness. Now, if you're going to pay those off and you're not going for a forgiveness program, this interest rate is gonna be helpful because this might be one that we wanna prioritize. Credit card debt is usually gonna to be top of your list. Out of all the loans out there, besides maybe like payday loans and some of the more unique ones out there, credit cards are probably top of your list. Usually followed by personal loans, depending on when you took out your student loans, it would be student loans and then 
car could be in there as well now. Car rates have gone up. And then probably coming in towards the end, I hopefully, unless you've got a home recently, you know, your mortgage is probably the lowest part there. And while I would love to give you the exact details on how to pay these off, I would say there's two ideas here. First one is go after the highest interest rate. That's your finance 101 answer. Go after that highest interest rate. However, we also like the idea of more or less the psychological snowball, where maybe something in the middle has the lowest balance and you say, I can get this paid off tomorrow or soon. And it just starts to build that momentum. And then you take that payment and roll to the next one. The first part of fixing the second part of the Henry equation is getting your debts organized and get a plan of attack going to pay off these debts. Because when you have assets minus liabilities equal your net worth, if you start to lower the liability part, what happens? It goes up. We're getting richer. We're getting richer. So that's part one, liabilities, let's get them organized, let's get them out of your way. But that's part one, getting rid of those liabilities. Coming back to that same equation, assets minus liabilities equal net worth. On this part of it, let's start to increase your assets. If you increase your assets, you increase your net worth again. And maybe you're doing both of these together, that's a real win because now we're really making an effect on the net worth. So let's think through the asset side. Assets usually, I always say the simplest form is just continuing to save more, right? adding more to your 401k at work, adding more to your taxable investment account, adding more to your savings account, right? B beefing up that bank account. Let's get that thing a little bit more solid. There's a lot of ways to build up your assets. And this could even be one where you do go buy a home, right? Now, ideally, you got to get a decent down payment on it. So then we have some equity in there right away. So that equity is an asset. So we increase it there. So there are a lot of ways to build up the asset side of it. Uh, and this is one of my more favorite areas, depending on what your liability situation looks like, but building up your assets is gonna be one of your strongest ways to long-term net worth growth because of what? Compounding interest. So a lot of your investments, you put in the heavy lifting now, you also get paid with that compounding interest year in and year out. And this could be an investment asset. This could be, you know, in the form of real estate as well. There's a lot of different ways here, even coming into business ownership, right? Owning a business, building up something like that in terms of assets. Part two here is going to be increasing the assets to help you on that second part of the Henry equation on not rich yet. Next up, reduce your day-to-day -day expenses. I know this is not breaking news and we're going to start to go through some smaller items now because we already covered your two biggest ones, right? Assets, liabilities. But here are some tips to help in this entire equation. Again, reducing those day-to-day -day expenses. Sometimes this is more difficult, but at the same time, there are usually areas inside of your budget, right? Everything today is on subscription. You probably have things going out that you completely forgot about. Keep an eye on that. When's the last time you negotiated with your insurance company to see if you can get better rates on your car insurance or your renter's insurance or your homeowner's insurance? Or when's the last time you just spreadsheeted maybe other companies? Maybe there's better options out there. So there are a lot of ways to look into your day-to-day -day expenses, trying to lower those, seeing if there's any way to cost share somewhere where maybe there's areas where you can save save in groceries, or maybe there's areas you can save in utilities. But this is one of the easiest ways to help the overall picture. If you, you go through everything and you stop using Uber Eats all of a sudden, and your grocery bill is going to go up because you're cooking at home more, but you still are up $200 per month. If you take that $200 per month and you're going out on weekends with friends, it's not probably going to, well, I can tell you, it's, it's not going to help us on that equation. Now, could it add more to your overall enjoyment of life? It could. It certainly could, which is still a win. But wherever we can save here, the goal is to put that money to better use, whether putting it towards an asset or, wait for it, putting it towards a liability and paying down debt faster. So go through that budget, see if there's anywhere that you can optimize and lower some expenses here and there. A little bit will go a long way when you let that play out over a long time. One of the kryptonites for the Henry Group, the fancy car. You had to get the Tesla, you had to get the BMW, because look, I make all this income, so look at my cool car. But cars are one of the biggest waste of money. Now, if you're a car collector and you're like, it's an asset, I know everything about Corvettes out there, I know that I'm gonna make money. I'm gonna push you experts over to the side and just say, that's a whole different world, I don't even know how to talk through that. I don't even know what data points I want to hit with you. But for most of us, a car gets us from point A to point B. They depreciate in value the moment you take them off the lot. So whether you're buying them new, whether you're leasing, which is a whole other conversation, buying versus leasing, but cars are one of your worst things that you can purchase in terms of Henry, right? It's not a good asset. 99% of the time, it's depreciating extremely fast and it's a liability. Next up, try to find or add new sources of income. 
So in the physician world, we might label this as a side gig. This could be something where maybe you're starting to do witness work, or maybe you're taking some extra call pay or moonlighting pay somewhere. But for anyone, this could be just other forms of income, maybe another side gig, maybe something that's a hobby, but you can still get paid to do it. Maybe this is you starting up your own business on the side. So the key here is you're trying to really work on that net worth picture again, but extra income allows us to do what again? We can put more money towards the asset side of the equation, or we can put more money towards the liability side and continue to pay down debt. But if you are opening up a new business, maybe this is one where we start to actually get some business value in there as well. So not only do we have the assets growing, we also have a new business entity in there, which is pretty neat stuff. So this one, we'll keep it simple, but you're looking for extra income sources that either allows you to save more or build a business, or the, on the other side of it, continue to pay down your debts, hopefully a little bit more aggressively. It's a car payment to the point when we build plans, most of the time we're almost building car payments in, in perpetuity. Even if you're leasing, you get into a new lease. Very rarely today will you see people buy a car and drive it for 10 years to 250,000 miles. You just don't see that often anymore. In your Henry journey, one of the quickest fixes you can have is don't buy the fancy car. I'm not saying you can never buy the fancy car, but in this phase, remember, part, part two of that phase of Henry, you're not rich yet. You're not rich yet, so don't go buy the fancy car. Just continue to build your assets. If you ever uh, read the book, The Millionaire Next Door, uh, I believe to this day, the most commonly driven car from millionaires is I believe the Ford F-150. So it tells you a lot about kind of those in disguise millionaires and what we would label as the rich, right? They fixed that second part of Henry. So for this one, don't buy the fancy car, at least don't buy it yet. Another way to increase your assets, not only today, but going forward because of the magical power of compounding interest, maximize or increase your retirement contributions. So if you're doing 4% to the 401k, increase it to five. If you're doing five, increase it to six. If you're gonna get a 3% pay raise, increase it by one or 2%, right? You have never even felt that new income come in yet. So this is a good opportunity to increase what you're saving towards your retirement accounts. See if there are any other retirement accounts, in particular for our physicians, you may have a 403B, but you might also have a government 457B that you can take advantage of. Are you taking advantage of the backdoor Roth IRA? Are you setting money aside in an HSA? Have you put money into your overall savings buckets in terms of like a taxable account, which we wouldn't label as a retirement contribution, in terms of non-qualified versus qualified, but it's still an asset, an investment asset that should grow and likely takes on some form of a retirement asset at some point in the future. Main goal here is to continue to increase your retirement contributions until you're able to maximize those. If you're in a high income tax bracket, you're likely leaning more towards pre-tax deductions. If you're in a lower tax bracket, then maybe you're taking advantage of Roth contributions here. But regardless, you want to continue to increase at least until you're maximizing your retirement plan contributions and taking advantage of all the buckets that you have available to you. Your emergency fund. It is definitely on the asset side, so that is good news, but there's also just the overall peace of mind that comes with an emergency fund. An emergency fund can take on a lot of different sizes. One, based on your income, your expenses, your needs, but also just your feel good number or what we call your rainy day fund or that sleep number. Like you sign into your online bank account and you see that number and you say, feels good. Some stuff could seriously go wrong and we are still in a blessed spot. That's what we want you to think about with that emergency fund. So not only does it help us on the asset side, but it also helps us with the overall psychological side of finance, which is just really important for your long-term well-being as well. So make sure you have an emergency fund, make sure it's funded. Don't be scared to use it. The amount of times we have seen clients have this beautiful emergency fund and an expense pops up and they throw it on their credit card defeats the purpose of the emergency fund. If you need to dip into the emergency fund, that's fine. Just make sure you make it a priority to refill it so that you're back to the level that you want to have it at, whether that's an income number, whether that's an expense number, whether that's your feel-good number, just find a good spot, make sure you have that emergency fund, make sure you keep an eye on it. The emergency fund is probably one of the most important parts to a financial plan, both today and in the long term. Last but not least, make a plan. Use the topics that we just covered and make a plan for yourself. At the end of the day, you're using a financial plan to fix the second part of the Henry equation. You are already in a very great spot by just having the first part of the equation for Henry, right? That high earner, that high income portion. Just now put that income, that those earnings to good use to continue to build up your net worth. And some of these things are tough, right? Student loans are at high numbers. The housing market is at high numbers. Interest rates are at high numbers. At the time that we're recording this video, 
road. They're the highest they've been in a long time. There's always going to be headwinds, but don't sit there and make excuses. Continue to show up every day. Put those funds to good use, whether that's the asset side or the liability side. But make a plan. Follow the plan, reevaluate the plan. It's not going to be perfect. Course corrections are part of life. Sit down periodically, if it's monthly, if it's quarterly, if it's weekly, if it's daily, if it's yearly. Just make sure you have a plan, make sure you're keeping an eye on it. And before you know it, the not rich yet part of the equation for Henry will no longer be a part of your life and you will be rich. And remember the term rich can mean a lot of things too. Don't worry about what the neighbors are doing. Don't worry about what the Joneses are doing, the Smiths are doing. Worry about you. Find your rich life. So make that plan, follow that plan, and then update that plan. You'll be in a good spot. And there you have it. How to conquer and get rid of the term Henry from your life. Unless one of your loved ones is named Henry, you want to keep that Henry around. But it comes down to two simple things, assets and liabilities. It's really just a net worth equation. It's your balance sheet. Increase your assets, decrease your liabilities. What do you get? Higher net worth. That's the part of the Henry equation that we're trying to fix. The first part, good news high income, high earner. We love that part. We want to fix that second part. So now is your chance. Go build your plan. Go build up those assets. Go pay down those liabilities and you will no longer be labeled as a Henry. How do they come up with these acronyms? I have no idea, but it's a popular one. It sticks. Again, very popular YouTube video on our first go of it and also popular blog post. So we know it's popular. So let's fix this for you. As always, thanks for hanging out with me for the last 15 minutes or so. If you have not subscribed to the channel, you can subscribe here. If you also, you click on this little bell icon, you'll get a notification every time we release a new video. Again, thanks for hanging out with me and I will catch you on the next video.